All right, in this video, we're going to talk a bit about Z-Spheres, what they are, how they work, and then give you a conceptual rundown of their workflow. Now, up to this point, you've given us that quick introduction to sculpting. Mm -hmm. So this is getting over into a whole other way to work with sculpting geometry on the scene. This is actually kind of like a pre-sculpting thing. Ah, I uh, see. Z-Spheres allow you to create a very basic, uh, actually doesn't even have to be basic, but we'll get into that later. Okay. Uh, initially, basic framework of polygons that you can then sculpt on and turn into, into a work of art. Interesting. All right. Uh, the idea of sculpting is that you start off with a piece of geometry, and then you push and pull points, as we've already seen. Sure. And a common workflow, at least before the advent of Z-Spheres, was to go into some other modeling application and create some sort of a base model. Mm -hmm. Like, you could model out a really quick down-and-dirty bypass head and then pull that over into ZBrush by way of an OBJ and then you could divide that and sculpt it into a beautiful human being. Right. With Z-Spheres you don't have to do that. You can just start straight in ZBrush and begin modeling. Z-Spheres allow you to spend a lot more time just working right inside of ZBrush and okay. we'll talk about how that works here in just a moment. But first off, what are Z-Spheres? Well, in essence, they're really just kind of a special tool. And now, when I say tool, I realize that every type of 3D model that you create inside of ZBrush is technically called some sort of a Z-tool. Sure. I want you to use tool in the conceptual sense. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is that Z-spheres themselves are not something that you're going to be exporting. You're right. not going to be able to take these Z-spheres and take them over to Maya. and. So basically, it's a means to an end. In this case, the end being an actual polygon mesh. Yeah. So in this one case, when I say tool, think of it like a real tool, like a wrench or something, mm -hmm. uh, because it's just helping you work. And the purpose of this tool is to allow you to create a polygonal skin. And even in this case, I have to put skin in quotes. <laughs> All right. Because if you're coming to this from another application, such as 3ds Max and Maya, uh, if you hear skin or skinning, you always think of attaching joints to geometry and rigging stuff and animating it. And it's not really that way. When I say skin in this case, what I'm referring to specifically is a membrane of polygons that are more or less stretched along these Z-spheres. Yeah, okay. automatically generated around your Z-spheres. So draw some little spheres and give us an, uh, an idea, an example. Well, what you're going to do is create a model that will be defined by the position, orientation, and scale of a hierarchy of Z-spheres. And that sounds really complex when you use that many words to describe it. You think? But it's, nah. pretty, it's pretty basic. Well, I mean, it does to me, but I have a really short attention span sometimes. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, uh, yeah, and you know this. So, um... <laughs> So I can create a bunch of Z-spheres. And by the way, Z-spheres never really look like this. They practically never are just floating out here in space. Uh, but, yeah, you got to cut me some slack for my awesome drawing skills. You will create a network of Z-spheres that resembles some sort of familiar shape. And hopefully this is a vague... I have familiar. no clue what you just drew. Yeah, it's, a it's a C anemone, obviously. <laughs> and um, when ZBrush sees this, it can then use them to create a polygonal skin, again, it's like a membrane of polygons, that goes around this hierarchy, giving you a basic rudimentary model. So I would assume that you have quite a bit of control over these Z-spheres. That's the idea, is okay. that you can uh, move them, you can scale them, you can rotate them, uh, use a lot of various different positions, you can use combinations of a lot of different spheres to get a variety of effects in your base mesh. But again, you have to remember the idea here is that this mesh is kind of intended to be rudimentary. Correct. You're not just going to hit a button and get a beautiful model out of this. So let me make sure I have a, a clear understanding here. So the idea is once you have constructed a network of Z-spheres like this and you have your membrane of polys, you then begin sculpting exactly how we saw in the last video when you gave an introduction to sculpting where you used a simple like sphere tool yeah. and you started pushing and pulling on that. That's right. Now, uh, now again, I realized at the beginning of this video, I said I was going to talk about what Z-spheres are, how they work, and then we go into the workflow. Mm -hmm. And what I've done instead is I've created sort of a chop suey conversation of all of those things at once. Sweet. <laughs> Which is fine. Uh, again, you, you know kind of what a Z-sphere is, and we haven't seen them yet. Again, this, the whole idea here is to say vaguely conceptual. Mm -hmm. uh, then how they work is by working inside a hierarchy like you see here. Now, when I say hierarchy, do you know what I mean when I say hierarchy? Anytime anybody says hierarchy, you mean some sort of a child. Yeah, you think parent and child. Yep, and then you have children. children, and then those children could have other children. And that's how Z-spheres work. I could create a chain of Z-spheres that looked exactly like this inside of ZBrush if I wanted to. But I will always have what is called a root 
sphere. Mm -hmm. And that guy's kind of special, as we'll see. We can't delete that root sphere. Uh, he's always going to be present. Now, the neat thing is that as of more recent versions of ZBrush, you can create an entire model, an entire biped or monster or whatever it is you want to make from a single Z sphere. Hmm. And that's really fancy. We'll talk about the techniques for doing that a little bit later. Uh, but that's using some of the, the new fancier tools. So, again, how do they work? Well, you're going to form this hierarchy. Using this hierarchy, ZBrush will, again, create this membrane of polygons. And that membrane is considered just a basic shell. I mean, this is like your, your lowest form of geometry. You're going to take that result, you're going to divide it, you'll sculpt it, push, pull, and form it into something pretty. It will not be pretty when it first comes out. That's just kind of how this out works, and you have to know that going in. So if you're like, ooh, well, just using Z-Spheres, I can create the ultimate character, hit a button, and it's done. No, you still have a lot of work left to do. That's coming in the year 2015. Uh, actually, I'm hopefully, or yeah, by then it'll just be like, hey, give me an awesome character. And it'll just like, it's talk oriented. You just tell it what you want. It exactly. Goes. All right. So that's kind of a, a combination of what they are and how they work. So a real quick rundown of the general workflow, just so that you're familiar with what we'll be doing. I will give you a heads up. Some of the steps that I will mention here, I'm mentioning so that you've heard the terminology before, mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily something we're going to be e exploring right away. The stuff we'll get to as we move forward, but it's, this is kind of like planting the seed, so sure. to speak. So the general workflow is to start off by building your hierarchy of Z-spheres. I actually spelled hierarchy right on the first try. You did. And I was about to say ZBrush instead of Z-Spheres. I patted myself on the back way too quick there. I'm still sitting here just smiling that you said planting the seed. Makes me proud. Anyways, continue. There you go. All right, so you're going to start off by building your hierarchy of Z-Spheres, which, you know, in, the, in an example like this would be a stick figure representation of a biped mm -hmm. or whatever it is you want to create. The neat thing about them, as you start using them and as uh, once you understand all of the tools with them, they're extremely intuitive and they are very, very fast. So even if you don't really know what it is you want to build, they're so quick and easy that you can just kind of dive right in and be inspired as you work, which awesome. is one of my favorite things about them. Next, you will convert that to a mesh. Actually, you know what? Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely confuse everybody. How's that? Awesome. My favorite way to uh, go throughout the day. You have two options at this point. So... <laughs> Let's do it this way. Option one over on this side is that you convert this to a mesh. Catch up, computer. And we'll so by converting to a mesh, I would assume we then have lost yeah, this, that history back to the... Yes. Okay. Yeah. At that point, it's just a bunch of polygons. Okay. Which you can then divide and sculpt. Yeah, and that's completely separate from uh, the Z-spheres themselves. Basically, at that point, the Z-spheres have done their job. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't, uh, with some good saving habits, go back and still have your original Z-sphere model if you're like, eh, that didn't work, and you, you can jump back, but all that sculpting you did isn't going to come along for the ride. Okay. That's just something to keep in mind. Now, as you do this, there is one more step that I'm going to mention we'll be exploring further down the road, but I want you to hear the word... Let's retopologize. And just to give you a quick idea of what that is, uh, the flow of all of the polygonal edges on this base model may not necessarily be optimal for your project. Mm -hmm. If you're going to take this character over into another application, such as Maya, 3ds Max, uh, Soft Image, anything you like, certain parts of the geometry may not be great for deformation. Sure. Uh, especially if you want to do fancy things like facial animation. Retopologization allows you to create your own topology, your own flow of polygons. If you need those nice pretty edge loops around the face so that you can get some nice deformation there, you can create those. The great thing about ZBrush is that you can do that early on if you want, um, as soon as you convert it over to a mesh, if you like. Or you can do some sculpting and you can transfer your sculpting over to the newly retopologized mesh. It's really kind of up to you. And we'll, t we'll explore retopologization a bit further down the road. Sounds good. Now, that is one avenue for workflow. Mm -hmm. The other avenue, is I'll put like a, a pointless divider line there just because it makes me feel better, is that you can instead use Z sketching. And I don't know why I put an S first, so i got to squeeze a Z in here. 
Now, Z-sketching is kind of like working with infinite clay. Basically, you can take a Z-sphere hierarchy, your little armature of Z-spheres, and you can paint uh, volume over the surface of those Z-spheres and build up something, nice. uh, which is very, very nice. It's a, it's a heck of a lot of fun, i got to tell you. And if you have a really nice understanding of anatomical muscle flow, you can actually make your strokes of three-dimensional paint follow the flow of muscle strands and get something that is extremely anatomically detailed in very short order. Now, I take it, and I'm just guessing, but seeing how you're not converting this over to a mesh at this point, you still maintain a history back to your z spheres. You do. Uh, that's the one something we will explore when we get into z, uh, z sketching is that your z spheres still exist through this process. And so, if you, you know, maybe your proportions on your your little hierarchy, your armature that you've made, maybe they aren't right. Maybe you want to change the pose, mm -hmm. anything like that. You can just manipulate the z spheres themselves and make it so that these spheres that you sketch on the surface that you've been using to actually form your volume, you can make those come right along for the ride. Uh, there are a few things to keep in mind, some caveats to that, but overall, it's extremely smooth. It's almost spooky how well it works, uh, to be honest. But then, after that point, once you get uh, a nice Z sketch in place, now understand, and I'll, we'll come across this later, your Z sketch, all of this work where you're painting this detail on, is entirely independent of your Z spheres. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's important to keep in mind, I'm gonna, and so important, I'm going to write it down. And I'll abbreviate these spheres for speed sake. Because when you're converting over to a mesh, you're not converting those original spheres at all. You're converting the result of this Z sketch. Right. And again, we will, we will get a chance to see all this later on because it's one of my new favorite ways to model anything, especially organics. So you will take the result of this Z sketch and then really everything else that you see here carries over. So you'll convert that over to a mesh. You'll then divide and you'll sculpt that and then retopologize if necessary. Fair enough. So it's just a question of do you want to use the basic mesh that comes out of the skinning process, the, this membrane that comes from your Z spheres themselves, or do you want to use your hierarchy as a frame to create a Z sketch out of this kind of digital clay? And if you need, like, kind of a, a, an analogy to the real world, when creating actual clay sculptures uh, and there's like Gollum was a great example because you know they made a life-size Gollum mm -hmm. out of clay they started off with a nice little wire armature it's like wire and metal and it's just like a very basic skeleton and then they just start slapping clay on top of that and shaping it into what they want and Z sketching works in a surprisingly similar way you just start slapping on these strokes it's like 3D paintbrush strokes of volume that you can build up and you can make them flow along with the topology and then when you I'm uh, sorry well with biological topology right. you, you make it flow with muscle musculature and uh, and anatomy and then when you're done you convert that over and you get what is depending on how well you laid down those strokes you get a beautiful model mm -hmm. so that's something we will be exploring as we move forward because like i said it's absolutely amazing and it's a crazy amount of fun to do very cool so that's it that's uh, a quick rundown of what z spheres are Hopefully that made some sort of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit about how they work and what you're going to be seeing. A great, we haven't seen them here. This is all just concept stuff that I sure. think you should know going in. And then a rundown as to what you can expect in terms of workflow. Okay. Unless there are any questions. No, I think that was actually very clear. All right, then that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.